Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing an analysis of GIVO. So as always, let's start off with the P ratio. As you can see though, it currently does not have one. So this is an indicator that they're make that they're losing money and not making money. It also means that they're just not profiting. As you can see with their negative earnings per share, which is at a negative 0.39. The last thing I want to look at on this page is their dividends and if they offer any, which they currently do not. So this is perfectly fine. Some companies just rather reinvest the money back into, into themselves. Or this could also be a big red flag that they just might not have enough cash flow going around in their company. So this is something to look at later down the line. So moving into the income statement, I want to start off with the revenue. So as you can see, between 2016 and 2018, they had some very solid years. Then in 2019 and 2020, they literally fell off a cliff. And this is a red flag to me because they started losing revenue before the world even got shut down. All right, so let's look at their net income now. So not pretty at all. Um, you never want to see the net income be negative because if the net income's negative, the company is not profiting. And why would you invest into a company that isn't profiting, especially a company that is making less profit than it did five years ago? Not good to see. So the last thing I want to look at on the income statement is the share the share sound standing so with this you want to see it decrease because the more it goes up the less of the company individual investors actually own so as you can see it looks terrible they're diluting the crap out of their investors they literally made a jump from almost 200,000 to 56 million so this is not good to see at all moving into the balance sheet now i want to take a look at their current assets and their current liabilities so as you can see with their current assets, they currently stand at 83 million, which is up from the 33 million just five years ago. So this is this is really nice to see. But I personally like to see a little bit more consistency because they do like to go up and down every other year. But it's it's okay. It's not too bad. It's really nice to see that they're up almost 50 million. So let's look at their current liabilities now. So with their current liabilities, it, it looks really good. Just five years ago, they're at 34 million. They narrowed it down to almost about five million, so it's really good to see that they have a crap ton more assets than they do current liabilities. So the last thing, and arguably the most important thing to look at on their financial statements, is their free cash flow. So this basically shows how well the company generates cash to pay its debts and ability to fund its operating expenses. So as you can see, it's not good at all. It's basically at the same spot it was at five years ago. So this is never a good sign because as you want to see it grow over the years and not just stay the same. So before the end of the video, I just wanted to show you how their earnings per share has came out the past couple of years since they are dropping that info in like a week or so. So as you can see in this column, it shows what they reported. And, and in this column, it shows whether they beat or miss expectations. So almost every single time this company has missed on their estimate estimates. So I want to bring this up because you guys need to understand, don't get your hopes up next week when they, when they come out with their financial statements for the quarter, they have a consistent pattern of disappointment. So I wouldn't bet on them beating their estimated EPS anytime soon. In conclusion, this company has really crappy financials and it's something I'm personally not looking to invest into right now. Maybe my mind will change 10 years from now once the world is even more focused on renewable energy. But as of right now, this company is not worth my money. I find it comical that they literally miss on their EPS estimates almost every single time. So I want to put it this way. Do you want to invest into a company that is losing money and not profiting? Or do you want to invest into a company that can actually make money on a consistent basis? Well, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I just want to mention that I am not a financial advisor and I recommend you do more research before coming to any conclusion of buying or selling the stock. If you guys have any stocks you want me to do an analysis on, feel free to comment down below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and have a nice day.